Next, we're going to spend some time talking about both pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic treatment approaches. And when trying to understand how to best address a behavioral and psychological symptom in dementia, it's really important to understand what the underlying etiology is, and that will really help you direct treatment. So a urinary tract infection, pain, issues with a caregiver or psychosis should all be addressed very differently. However, in real-world treatment, patients with behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia often receive antipsychotics. Now, while antipsychotics do have the best evidence for treating these symptoms, their effects, meaning the magnitude of their treatment size, are moderate at best, and they have an effect size of 0.13 to 0.16. And any benefits within antipsychotics must be balanced against the risks of adverse events, including mortality, as outlined by the U.S. FDA boxed warning. So many of you are probably aware of the U.S. FDA black box warning related to use of antipsychotics for dementia-related behaviors. And that's based off of numerous randomized clinical trials that showed that elderly patients with dementia-related psychosis who are treated with antipsychotic drugs are at an increased risk, and generally we say a 1.6 to 1.7 times increased risk of death as compared to placebo. And folks often ask, what are the causes of death related to antipsychotic treatment? And generally, that tends to be a cardiovascular event, like a ventricular arrhythmia or prolonged QTC. That can be a cerebrovascular event, like a stroke, or a pneumonia, like an aspiration event. It's important to remember, though, that antipsychotics have many other side effects other than just the increased mortality risk, which can also cause distress for patients. And those can include things like extrapyramidal side effects, falls, sedation, as well as worsening cognition. So I'll highlight some findings from a few studies here. The first study was done by Donovan Moss, which took a look at patients with dementia who received antipsychotic medications as well as valproic acid and looked at the number needed to harm for each of these medications. So they looked at how many patients had to be treated to cause one episode of death or what they called harm. And the numbers are far too small for these medications. And for haloperidol, can take only eight patients treated with this medication to be associated with one death. And even for valproic acid, there's still an increased risk. The figure here shows a graph from a study from Helen Kales looking at veterans with dementia who were prescribed different antipsychotic medications and survival over time. And as we can see, patients with dementia who are prescribed these medications have decreased survival curves, meaning that each of these medications is associated with mortality. Haloperidol is the purple line here, which has a steeper slope and associated with greater mortality. Quetiapine is the green line on top, a little bit less, but still an increased mortality risk. So we know that these antipsychotic medications come with significant risk. So it's important to think about what are other evidence-based approaches to detecting and managing these behaviors. And it's really important to think about what are the possible etiologies that are contributing to include caregivers in the process, as well as to think about how to integrate pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic treatment options, as well as to build in flexibility to use these types of treatments in a variety of care settings where patients are. And really, the goal is to try to avoid knee-jerk prescribing of medications without an assessment of underlying causes. And in the next section, I'll kind of walk through how we think about non-pharmacologic treatment options for behavioral disturbances and dementia. All right. So our key points. So similar to the treatment of delirium, knowing the underlying causes of behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia will really help best direct the appropriate treatment. So again, infections, issues with caregivers, trouble with the environment, and psychosis should all be approached very differently. However, in real-world practice, persons with dementia are often prescribe psychotropic medications like antipsychotics, despite evidence for a modest treatment effect. While antipsychotics do have the best evidence for treatment of behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia, they are associated with significant risks, including increased mortality, falls, confusion, sedation, as well as motor side effects. 